Hello guys and welcome on my YouTube channel. So today I got interesting image with name of Ryu of the order of execution in cell force. So let's investigate this image together. So on the first step what system do it load the original records value, trigger old keeps the original value. So after that we are going to the step number two. What system do its update trigger new with the values from the request? And here are what uh, additionally system do it checking where this request come from. If it's come from the standard UI, then it's perform standard system validations like uh, compilers uh, with layout specific rules that were set, required values at the level. Uh, layout level and field definition level, also valid field format, maximum field length, and stuff like that. So if this request uh, did not come from the standard UI, so for example, if it's come from the Apex application or SOAP P call, then it's execute all before uh, triggers. And also here we should note, so if we have more than one trigger uh, for the same object, the order will be random because Salesforce not guarantee which trigger will be executed uh, before than other if they are on the same object. So we need to consider one trigger per object to get ahead uh, with a good behavior. So after that we have uh, step number four. It's uh, standard validations for the system. It's performing in general like the same validations that uh, we have on the standard system validation on step number two. But if this step is related to situation when we have, for example, something absurd that we are apex to not skip uh, this step entirely. So if we will go to this uh, mark number three, we will see that what it's do, it's require values at the layout and field definition level and uh, valid field format and max field length. So as a step uh, number five, what it's do, it's perform custom validations and uh, duplicate rules execution. So on this step, uh, it's checking custom validation rules. Is for example, our new value is not allowed or if it's allowed and stuff like that. And also checking duplication rules. If, for example, our new uh, records that we are trying to create will not be like duplicates. If it will be duplicates, then it will try to notify us about it. So after that, we are going to step number six. It's when we save the record to the database, but please note that it's not committed yet. So after that, we are going to step number seven. It's execute all after triggers. If you will check mark number two, it's also telling us to not forget that if we have more than one trigger, then uh, all after triggers will be executed and we not guarantee, so cell force not guarantee the order of execution of those triggers. So we still need to consider one trigger per object to get ahead with that flow. So what happening uh, after that is we are going to have executed assignment rules. Assignment rules will be executed for leads and case objects only. So for this uh, specific uh, purple car color, you could see that uh, during the recursive save, Salesforce keep uh, step Vosim assignment rule and uh, sorry eight assignment rules through seventeen. Uh, roll up summary in the grand parent record. So I will um, explain why it's uh, have recursive save. So after assignment rules, we are going to auto response rules. Again, it's applicable for leads and case object only. And we are coming here for workflow rules. So all the steps that we could see here. Um, could be recursive because during uh, the execution we could have uh, up to five workflow revaluation uh, in general six iteration in total and uh, it's happening to the uh, this workflow field update only and in total we could have uh, this number of calls before triggers this number of calls for after triggers and six field updates and uh, six flow triggers so what does it mean if for any reason with our change uh, we change something on the record and uh, this change uh, invoke our workflow rule and this workflow rule perform field update again and uh, what it's do, it's um, 
trying to create email alert, create task, trying to perform uh, unbound message, so let's check a note. So input parameters are taken at the moment when the flow trigger starts, not at the moment when uh, the workflow evaluation takes place. It's an important note. And after that, we are checking, do we have any kind of additional field update? If yes, we are going to this step and performing flow trigger. If no, we are going here again. So what does it mean, this step? It's that we are going again to here and performing this entire line again and coming to this flow. So for example, if we have one more time field update, then we are uh, system update trigger new with the values from the updated records, including new fields update. After that, it's execute all before uh, update trigger. After that, it's execute standard system validation. But Please keep note that there are no custom validation again, and it's also um, just running duplicated rules. It's uh, this note that not custom validations. It's important because uh, we should uh, know that when um, workflow uh, executed, uh, custom validation will not work on uh, this revolution. After that, we have uh, regular save the records to the database again. No commit yet and all after update trigger and again we come into this stage so once uh, all of these uh, recursive save will be completed we will go to execution of um, escalation rules somewhere here should be also process builder but uh, it's not on this image so now we are at the level of execution escalation rules right after that, we are going to entitlement rules, which is uh, applicable for both of those steps are applicable for case object only. After that, we are going to a step where we have recalculation of roll-up summary fields on the parent records, saves parent records, and also here we have a note that also input parameters are taken at the moment when the flow trigger starts, not at the moment the workflow evaluation take place. Next step, it's uh, system calculate roll-up summaries on grandparent level. So what is different between those two steps? Because this one was for parent record, this one for grandparent record. So after that we have a uh, system to execute criteria-based sharings. So all changes to sharing table are calculated on this step. Please notice, so after very big number of different operations only on this stage we have this sharing recalculation after that only we have this commit all of uh, dml operation to the database only at this step so it's commit uh, all new updated and deleted records and also all new updated and deleted sharing rules as well on this step and as a last step we have uh, execute of post commit logic such as sending emails and stuff like that so we could check this uh, mark number six what it's doing it's sending email unbound uh, messages uh, place it to the queue time-based workflow action calculate uh, system calculate index such as search index and render uh, file previews so this is entire overview of the order of execution some uh, additional items could be missed here like for example we mentioned uh, process builder step but in general it should provide uh, some kind of a review of what in general happens and uh, at what step if for example we're debugging any kind of problem what where we could potentially have recursion uh, and uh, what's becoming recalculated where so thanks for the attention